This video will be about soldering wires together to connect the fan that I'm using to pump air. I could directly connect it to USB. Yet I want to be flexible and be able to connect to different things. So I'm going to connect the fan to this. And then this I can plug into here. This will go to USB, but I could also attach this same plug to anything else I wanted to try the fan with. The first thing I'm going to do is apply a coating of solder to each of the wires that I'll be working with. So these wires are now tinned. One of those wires is tin. Let's see if I can get, can get this other wire. Melting a little bit of solder on the tip of the soldering iron greatly increases its thermal conductivity. That is, the rate at which I can move heat from the soldering iron to whatever I'm trying to solder it means you can solder more quickly. There's a place where heat and temperature are not the same thing. One way of looking at it is you could kind of look at like heat as in like how high something is. And temperature is that height times the weight of what you're dropping. So the heat transferred is energy. So at, there's a huge temperature difference, just a small amount of I'm trying to actually think about what is the nature of what is being transferred when heat is transferred and I really can't think of that I guess I could think of in terms of photons so if I have a high energy photon like that so that literally can get an exact temperature of a photon based on its energy level if I have a high energy photon it's going to transfer a lot of energy with just one of them but I can transfer just as much so let's say I have like a gamma ray photon. No, gamma ray, sorry, that's an electron particle moving. Uh, it's not actually light. I have an X ray photon. Or is gamma ray? I have to look it up. I'm not straight in my head. X ray photon is definitely light. So I have an X ray photon with a lot of energy. Alpha, beta. No, yeah, gamma ray. Okay, gamma ray is very high radiation light. So I have a gamma ray. And one photon, that's gamma ray, will transmit a lot more energy than, say, photons that are moving away from a surface just because of the temperature of the surface, though theoretically once in a while a uh, cool surface could emit uh, gamma ray, though it would be unlikely. But I have like some most of the photons would be infrared photons, which are even gentler than visible light. If I had enough of those infrared photons, I would still move a lot of heat. So heat is really the amount of energy that you move from one place to another place. And temperature is just kind of how extreme they are. I could actually think of what's being moved with heat. I could make a better analogy of that example. But if I have like a huge difference in heat between surfaces and they only touch for the smallest part of a second, I won't get as much heat transferred as if I hold them together for a long period of time. And when I want to actually change the temperature of something, 
you need to, it takes a certain amount of heat energy for each degree that you want to change in that temperature. That can vary a little bit from that temperature. I'm getting sidetracked, I should. I will finish this soldering. So I guess in short, the temperature of the soldering iron is pretty much capped, especially this soldering iron applies energy dependent on the temperature of the iron, so it pretty much maintains a constant temperature. But the amount, how quickly it transfers heat depends on how well that connection is formed with what I'm trying to solder. And that's where the little dab of solder on the soldering iron helps, is it allows that heat to transfer. One way of thinking about it is if your hand's wearing a glove and you stick it in water, temperature is not going to transfer that much. Or if there's a cold surface, yeah, if your hand is coated in water and you touch a cold surface, sometimes that temperature of that surface will transfer a lot more quickly. So that's kind of maybe what this is like, is the difference between touching a piece of um, metal that's cold, like in the winter, if you're in a place where um, water freezes in the winter. I touch a piece of metal with my hand. If my hand's dry, it won't get that much. I still feel that it's cold, but if my hand has a layer of water and I touch that same surface, the water helps conduct the heat a lot better. Even though it's freezing, it does absorb some of the energy itself. Alright, so I have these wires tinned. Now the next step is to solder them. If you don't have a soldering iron, you can use something like this, or you can even just twist wires together and then hold them with glue and tape. I offset these wires a little bit. Offset just means they're in different positions. I offset these wires a little bit because When I solder them together, the solder won't overlap, and so I don't have to worry about the wires creating a short circuit, even if they're not insulated. And I personally like having exposed welds whenever possible, because it makes troubleshooting easier. I also like the aesthetics of actually just being able to see it. Now I'm going to... Oops, those aren't held together quite as well as I would like. I want these wires to just kind of stay where they are when I solder them. with that weld. Now I just need to get the next weld. And I'm almost out of solder. I think I have another roll somewhere.
So just are still a little bit hot. So now I have this welded together. The next thing will be the fan. And I'm going to just apply some glue over that. But I'll be able to so glue this straw both ends and then I'll be able to see the welds in there. And since the welds are separated, are off, offset, I can actually put them in there and then if I need to re-solder them or something like that, I can actually just cut this open and work with that. Also, for my own personal sense of aesthetics, I like being able to see how things are put together 